Um, so I want to start at the beginning. Um, I understand that um, at least the idea for this film was a bit of a collaboration, uh, and I'm hoping you can just tell me at first how you got started, and then I'm going to ask you a little bit more about that. Uh, Vicky and I did another film together in 2015, which was called We Used to Be Cool. It was a comedy about um, three couples who had their first babies. Uh, and after that, we wanted to work together again. And at some point, Vicky said to me, why don't we make a film about Empress Elizabeth? And I was not, I, I think I was laughing because I'm, I grew up in Austria. And when you grow up in Austria, you're surrounded by the tourist cliche of, of the Empress, which is uh, as present as Mozart. So when you walk into a souvenir shop in Vienna, it's all Sissi and Mozart. So she's not cool, she's not interesting, to Austrians at least. <laughs> so uh, I didn't think that was anything for me and then I didn't really intend to make a period film and it, it was just, it, it didn't seem to fit for me. But it, it stayed with me in a way and uh, Vicky did a lot of other films and I did other films and we, what, we, we were in touch kind of and then at some point I started reading, um, I, I just had the feeling I wanted to know more and I started reading about the Empress and looking for something in the material that would resonate with me and want me to, or, or, or make it possible for me to decide if it was a, um, a character I would like to talk about in the film. What was it originally that made you suggest the idea of centering her as a character in the film? Um, hmm. So, I, d I say this so often now, so I try to make it new and original for you. <laughs> no, it's, oh, I'm curious now. <laughs> yes. No, also it's uh, so difficult to understand yourself and your own thoughts. As I find it always difficult to talk about my own thought process because a lot of it is unconscious. But I think, so when I was a girl and I, we didn't have these princess movies in our home because my parents were very, you know, hippie and my mother was very emancipated. So she taught me how to be um, free and climb into trees and not to become a princess. But my neighbors had the movies. <laughs> and it was like the forbidden fruit, you know, so I would go and watch the princess films there. Because as a girl, I still wanted to identify with the princess, and I did. And they also had a book there, which was the biography of Sissi Elizabeth, uh, which I read. And um, I think I, I read it because I was just interested in this woman. But reading it, I realized there was something, but maybe I felt it even watching the Marischka movies already, probably. But like I felt like there's something else about this woman that I don't read. Like why would someone build fitness um, tools? Like why would someone not want to be taken in picture, you know? It's all like a funny story, but then why? And I didn't get an answer to my why, and I think I stayed with the why all my life. And then when I met Marie, um, I had already become a grown up. I think, and uh, I had become a mother, and I had two children, and my son was just a baby, and I was breastfeeding, and I found it very difficult to work and be a mother at the same time, and we talked about it a lot. And then I thought, I think that's how it, somehow unconsciously it connected itself, you know, to, I don't know, I, I think what I felt at 15 and not knowing what it was, was this woman was trapped being a woman, which I always felt so unfair. You know, I grew up and I was supposed to be free because of how I was brought up, but still I didn't feel free. I still felt like going to school, I had to wear something that would please, you know, or I had to please in order to be recognized or loved or, you know, if I would wear, I think when I was 17, I was wearing a tie but very naive, it was just because I thought it was funny, you know, to wear a tie. But everyone thought I was a lesbian. 
just because I was wearing a tie, which is so stupid, you know, why would you, do, you know. And so all of my teenage years was a lot about this, you know, like whenever you do something, just because you think that's what you want to do, people judge you and they say, oh, oh, you're this kind of person, like, oh, let's put you in this cupboard, you know. And I think this cupboard thing made me connect to Sissy because she, in like a much bigger scale, something I never experienced, was put in the cupboard of an empress, which is almost like the symbolism, symbolic of being a woman or being a man, but being something that people have an idea about and like, oh, you are this one, you know, this Teletubby, you are now this, like, <laughs> you, you wear the purple thing, okay. You know, like, and then, no, yeah. So I think that's what I've related with, but not consciously. <clears throat> and what did you, was that something similar to what you found in your research, or did you find your own way into an interest with her? Um, I focused very much on, on Elizabeth in her 30s and 40s, because I knew I would, if, then I would make this film with Vicky, and it wouldn't, obviously, it wouldn't be about the 20-year-old princess, but also not about the 60-year-old empress. So it would be somewhere in between, and I didn't know very much about that time in her life. Um, and I think that she never liked being an empress. Um, and then at some point, at, at a certain age, she um, found her small ways of rebellion and escaping, escaping that role and that golden cage. And that um, I sensed these acts of rebellion in what I read with, for example, her traveling as much as possible, being away from, from, from the empire as much as possible. And then, for example, her eating disorder, what we would call the eating, an eating disorder right today, um, her refusing to eat certain things or eating at all, <laughs> um, or um, what, what she did to herself with the corset as well. I thought it had a lot to do with controlling herself, but also with, um, uh, doing th things differently from how it was expected from her. For example, um, the scene which is now in the film where, where she's sitting at, a, at one of those fancy dinners and not touching her food, that's actually a fact, that's something she did. She had to sit at these tables and be there, but, she, but nobody could make her eat or talk to anyone. And I, I thought that was already rebellion. And I, I sensed that and... Um, I grew up similar to Vicky and I was in an alternative school and then I came to film school which was very strict and a lot of old men telling me what to do. And I always had that like, if you tell me what to do, I'm going to do the opposite. Um, so I, I, I love that rebellious side of her that I had not seen in what you see in the souvenir shops. And I thought this was something that interested me in the character but also as a story because I, it was clear to me that I would not simply do a biography. It should be something that would have any, something to do with me, with us today. Um, and then I, I sense that there is something that has to do with women of all times, that we, have, we are expected to please in order to be loved. Still. We are still trained to please. And that's something I'm, I'm thinking about a lot, and, and maybe something that most of my films have to do with also. So it's, it's something, yeah, that just that I felt drawn to and that I wanted to talk about in this film. I mean, I, I see that so strongly in the film and also one of the things that I found really interesting and I loved in the film is that all these acts of rebellion come on the razor's edge of danger. So it's not, uh, I mean, it's very positive about her acts of rebellion, but it, it also shows uh, that the rebellion can be harmful to her or to her family. And I'm wondering if you can talk a, a little bit about, um, she's such a fascinating character in that she did find a way to rebel and yet um, she could only, again, do harm to herself sometimes in that process. That's actually a new question. Yeah, we were talking about it before because <laughs> <laughs> we've been doing press since April for this film. <laughs> and we were talking about new questions. I've never, I've never had this question before. Thank you. Um, uh, well, I think um, 
that I'm, I'm, I try to show her on the edge of something, still, try, still trying to function and to fit in and to, um, to fulfill all the expectations, but then feeling that this was not what she wanted, she wanted to do anymore and trying to find her own way with this. Um, um, and I don't know what exactly you mean, but what, what I think you, you mean probably is also that she's doing harm to herself with the corset and with all, all the physical. Or, you know, like the scene where she wakes her daughter up in the middle mm -hmm. of the night and takes her riding, and that's really exciting in some mm -hmm. aspects, but it's also terrifying mm -hmm. in other aspects. Mm -hmm. and I think maybe it is, when I did my first feature film, it, it was about the children who grew up in a commune and who return because their father is dying. And the, the dying father, the, the figure who was like the main character of the commune, I, at that point in my work life, I started to think about how can you show charisma? Is it, is it, an, is it a word? Is it an English word? Yes, <laughs> sorry. Uh, and I thought it is always when you cannot really know what someone is doing when you never really know what to expect from someone, that's actually very charismatic because you're surprised all the time. And I think that that's also something that I found when I read about Elizabeth, that she was a very different character depending on who would describe her. Uh, her children in their diaries, her ladies-in-waiting, um, the biographies are always, they are kind of different depending on who wrote them, at what time they were written. And so I thought, this is interesting. It, it's like many, many different portraits of a woman, of a woman, and I can find my own. But but it's also something that that tells me that she must have been. I mean, to me, she's very char charismatic because of that. She's totally unpredictable, and um, that's maybe also something that maybe answers your question. That I wanted to show that a woman you, you would never know what to expect of in the next moment. And also, we we I don't know like her about you. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, so I think if we are, like we all are, sometimes sad and suffering, um, it's, it's an pl easy place to go to, to make yourself suffer more for some reason, because then you feel yourself. Like, I think what humans suffer of most is when we feel that we don't know who we are, don't know where we are, why we exist, why we're even here. And is there anything I can feel from, you know? Like that's usually why we get married, you know? Like to, to, have, a, <laughs> to have something or someone there, like, oh yes, I'm here, I exist because you exist and you can mirror me, right? But if, if that's not the case, then oftentimes we start hurting ourselves because then you finally feel yourself. And I think she was, doing this extreme sports and using the corset and not eating, because that's a, another way of just feeling that you're alive. I want to ask you a little bit more about your the way you work together, because I, you know, if one person suggests the movie and then the other person goes away to research, I'm wondering if then when you arrive on the set, you know, whether it's like you're the director and you wrote this script and now you're going to play it or whether it was a constant evolution and discussion um, from both of you. We didn't talk. <laughs> we prefer telepathy. Yeah. Uh, That's actually correct. Yeah. yeah. We, talk, we talked uh, almost every night. We spent yeah, yeah. we spent almost every evening together. But we didn't talk we about the, we didn't talk we didn't about talk about the character, the work no. or the character or what to do, how to do it. It was more like, okay, we survived another day. Like, uh, <laughs> survived I, another day. Let's have some. Wine. I need some wine. <laughs> yeah, can we have a wine and a cigarette because this is like, too much. <laughs> and it went all the way till now, and we're like, even today we were like at the going out. We're like. Oh my God, we survived this. I can't believe it. We really made this movie. <laughs> we both didn't really have a break since then, so yeah. it's still the same exhaustion. No, but I think it's really, uh, telepathy might describe it. Of course, we talked about her, but not so much as you might think. Or that's, uh, but also, that's, it's, that's something I also love very, but very much about my job, is that you really have to find out with every person you work with how to talk to them or not to talk to them to, to, and especially with actors and actresses to find out what they need and some of them want to discuss everything and some of them don't want to talk at all and some of them want to hug you and some of them 
don't like you and it's all it's all part of it you know to to find out what 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 that person in front of your lens really needs to uh to come alive and i i basically do uh, what i basically do is to try to bring them very much into the moment and away from everything they planned and that's very very easy with vicky because she was well, very well prepared as i was but then she's also able to let go in the very second she enters the set and just be there. And that's, that's, that sounds very basic, but that's really hard. And a lot of people are not able to do that. Yes. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, I would love for you to talk about how you arrived at your creative decisions in terms of uh, looking at the period piece and how you would uh, make all the millions of beautiful decisions you did about that. Um, well, first, I didn't want to make a typical period piece, also because that's not possible with a European budget. The, the period pieces that we are familiar with um, and that we refer to are mostly Hollywood films with a, with a big, big budget. And we don't have budgets like that in Europe, although it was a very expensive film for Europe. But still, we wouldn't have been able to do the big thing. And I was not interested in that anyway, so we, we tried to come up with our own concept visually. And um, um, the, the music was the first part, uh, the first um, modern element, if you want. It was already in the script, so, um, I got, the, I got the question a lot already in the beginning. How are you going to do that? Are you sure that you want to use contemporary music? How will you use it? So I, have, I had to come up with something to answer that. And um, I found that it would be beautiful to have it, um, to have new interpretations of the songs in the film and so on. And that was actually the beginning. And then when we started, when I started to work with my um, um, production designer and costume designer who, I have already, I had already worked with a lot. Um, whenever they showed me the original stuff, like the, 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 the right clothes and the right furniture for that time, um, most of it was like too much for me, too much decoration, too heavy, too, too much fabric. And whenever I said, I like this one better, they said, but that was 20 years later. And at some point I said, I don't care, I like it better. <laughs> And then this kind of became our concept and also a, a, um, a game for all of us, really, because we were, I love the collaboration with other creatives, um, and it's such a beautiful thing to experience that things are never as you imagine them in the first place, but it becomes something else because you're working together. And all of these people had their own ideas, and then we like worked on it all the time. Um, like the props buyers coming up to me and saying, "I found this. I know it's wrong, but can we use it? It's so beautiful." <laughs> and everybody enjoyed that very much, to not having to do it correctly, because you can never really fulfill these expectations anyway, budget-wise on one hand, but then also because everybody thinks they know how it looked like. But then again, when I was in the Sisi Museum for the last time bef before the shooting. Uh, you can in Vienna. You can walk through the apartments. You can really walk through the rooms where she lived and the emperor lived. And there's all this furniture. And I thought this was how it was. And then at my very last visit, the curator said, um, "It was not like that. Like that. We don't know how it was. This is just how we think the tourists like it." <laughs> and I was like, "Okay, so this is fantasy anyway. We can do whatever we want." And this was very freeing, and, and I think we all enjoyed that, to, to just do our own thing and find our own concept and our own ideas. And then we wanted it to look like an empire which was already crumbling. So this was also part of the concept, to, to have the rotten castles and less furniture. I always would walk into the sets and say, okay, this is beautiful, but can you still remove this, that, and that? <laughs> so we all made, always made less and less and less, and, and this was basically basically the concept in the end. Um, I, I want to ask you about um, sort of a, a, something I think of uh, in that same vein about mixing sort of the modern with the classic, um, 
which is uh, this, there's the scene where you first hear contemporary music where she's coming up the stairs in slow motion and there's a moment where you break the fourth wall and look at the camera for a moment. Can you talk a little bit about that and whether that was planned and what the thinking was there? It was planned, but it, um, as many of my choices um, when I'm shooting, it was not con it was not like you have to do this because I like it because this it would mean this or that. It's just that I thought it was in that moment. I, I think it was stronger. I, for me, it was a very important scene, and um, yeah, and she she does that two or three other times in the film. I think it was just always intuitive. I have no better answer, sorry. <laughs> no, okay. uh, I'm wondering if you can sort of give a, if you had the exact same approach to creating her character in terms of, m you know, making it authentic, but mixing in what you needed, or? If I had the same, or how I created uh, it, or if, if I had the same. Herself or yeah. She if I had the same approach as her. In terms of Oh, yeah, 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 yes, I mean, there was a, a lot of, of uh, preparation, a, a lot, a lot, um, everything, the talking Hungarian, I don't talk Hungarian, I talk a lot of languages, but I don't talk Hungarian, it's a very difficult language, um, or the fencing, or the horse riding in the lady's saddle, or the ice swimming, or the learning the manners of the court, I... That was something I added on top myself deliberately, was uh, getting someone who would teach me about how people would move. And because they had like this whole, it's almost like a secret language they had of how you stand, how you hold your hands, if you hold your hand here, here. It all means something, you know? Like if your feet are like this or like this, it means if you're like common or if you're aristocratic, you know? Everything has a meaning, so I had to learn all the vocabulary of the body language, and I wanted to have like this carpet of knowledge so that I could go free, because I knew from the beginning, probably from telling her, let's make a movie about this, I always felt I want to do something that feels like a rebellion, you know? I mean, I think I always had this like intuition or feeling of, it's about to make it my own way or our own way or break free from, but I always feel like you can only do this if you are well enough prepared or if you pay off <laughs> in respect to the person who lived before or to the actual fact or whatever. So there was a lot of preparation, but then once I understood kind of who she was, I also understood I will never understood who she was because she never understood who she was, which then was the most interesting to me because we are all such complex creatures and we never know who we are and we we are someone else in different times of our lives, we are someone else in different moments of a day. And um, so to me it was important that it could be free in a way that all this different personality of hers would be able to move around some kind of noyau, like uh, the center of the thing, would have to be very grounded so that the rest could navigate and fly around. And then in the flying around, it became the playing with misbehaving, you know, how to properly misbehave, you know. I mean, there's a lot of stuff I do in the movie you're not supposed to do as an empress. But on top of that, there's a lot of, there's one, there's a, a big thing I do, which I'm not supposed to do as an actor, which is I let the audience down. Like usually, when you're an actor, you're taught to pl not please the audience, but catch the audience, you know? Like in comedy, you talk about comedy timing, or it's like how do you catch an audience, how do you keep it, and how do you not lose it? And doing this, I remember, and that was so great working with Marie, because she really let me be free. Um, I remember doing it and thinking this is so tricky and in a way dangerous because I let her be selfish and I let her turn down from the audience. That, at least that's how it felt doing it. it. Like 
almost turning the back to the audience when usually you're supposed to not do that, you know. And that was then again some way of misbehaving. So then doing it, to me it became, after the preparation, like Marie often says, it's about intuition. And while we were working, she came up with a lot of these ideas of the modern elements. So it, it grew on us as we were going along. And it grew on me, the misbehaving, as I was going along also, in my dialogue, not talking, <laughs> with Marie. <laughs> Um, that I, I really wanted to, to misbehave and, and also not only break the emperor's behavior, but break my actor behavior, where my actor behavior would be, as a woman especially, I want to be, behave well and I want to be pretty and like good and like do it as I should, but then I wasn't doing as I should, which I didn't know if it would work, but to me that's how it felt, you know, that I really wanted to that Vicky also wanted to misbehave. Well, thank you both for uh, engendering this gorgeous misbehavior. Uh, IFC is releasing the film on December 23rd if you want to see it again or tell your friends to see it. But um, thank you both so much for coming to share. Thank the you film. so much for having us.